Hello and welcome to day one of the Magical Readathon. This is the NEWT round. Um, today is August 1st. It is a Wednesday and so far I'd say I'm off to a pretty good start for this readathon. I decided to start with an audiobook, so right now I'm working on my acceptable level in potions, which is to read a book with a color in the title. And for this, I am listening to slash following along in on my Kindle of The Grey House. Um, this is, I believe, my longest book for the readathon. It's a 36 hour book. It's like 728 pages. And I've been listening to the audiobook while I've been at work, so I'm about almost three hours in, so I've got basically 34 hours left. So on the Kindle, it looks like I'm at page 56, which is 8% of the way. So I'm going to keep listening to this until I finish it. Um, I do want to start a physical book tonight, so I think I'm going to start with my herbology book. My acceptable for herbology is um, a book with a green cover, so I'm planning to read Every Heart of Doorway. I think this is like 180 to 190 pages, so hopefully I'll be able to finish it. Um, Let's see, I usually read between 30 and 50 pages a night, so it could take me up until my flight on Sunday, um, depending on how much reading I can get done each night. So um, my plan is to hopefully just finish Every Heart or Doorway within the first two days and then start and finish, hopefully, um, Black Hole, which is my exceeds expectations level for herbology so I'll let you know more about that as I make progress but right now I am working on updating my bullet journal and I think I'm going to start packing because I've been wanting to start packing for quite a while now and I finally feel like it's close enough to the trip where I can put stuff in my suitcase and not need it so that's what I'm going to work on for right now, and I will update you here in a little bit if I have made more progress in anything. So, just a quick update. Um, sorry you're facing down, but I want to show you my bullet journal setup for the month. Um, I've read another probably hour in The Grey House, and now I'm on page 75 of 728. I basically haven't done anything that I said I was going to do since my last update. Um, I've been uh, editing two YouTube videos to upload them since I'm going to be gone next week. So just making sure I've got everything good to go. And then I was also working on updating my bullet journal and was in a groove so I didn't want to stop. But basically, um, I know it's been a while since I showed you my bullet journal, so I figured it was a good update since we are on August 1st, so it's fresh for the month. So I've just got this August title page here. Um, I've been doing this kind of really simple design and just writing the um, month in the middle for the past couple of months. I really like it. Um, that's what I did for July and for June. So it's just been a really good look. And then this page here is my August TBR. So I've got all 14 books written down. Um, I have a category or a column for whether it's an audiobook, an ebook, or a physical book. And then on this page, um, I had messed up this page. So I originally glued these two together and then I thought it would be nice to have um, a tracker for my newts in the books and subjects and categories there at um, versus having it on just a sheet of paper on my desk. It was nice to have it in my bullet journal with all of my other stuff. So I just cut it down and glued it in. Um, this was a free printable from Creating and Co that Paige set up for anyone who wanted to use it. 
So I thought this was really nice to have. And then here's my YouTube schedule. So this is my calendar. Um, orange is for uploading, yellow is for editing, and green is for filming. So I've got all my oranges uh, for the days that I upload videos. I just haven't filled them in yet because not all the videos have been uploaded. And then I just kind of add in throughout the month um, to see if I have any trends for what days I'm filming heavily, what days I'm editing. And then down here, um, just because there's space, I've got my readathons in. So for the full month, I have this magical readathon. And then for just one week, the 13th through 19th, I have the TBR throwdown that was created by Page and Creating and Co. And then uh, here is my page for video plans. So again, I've got that column for film, edit, upload with the corresponding colors and then my video plans to date. And then these numbers aren't in chronological order because it's the date that I'm uploading them. And then after that, I just have a page for notes. So um, this grows with the month so depending on how many tags I do or anything that I need to actually write down like questions and I just want to store it. So that's my bullet journal so far for August. Um, this is how much I've filled in for the year and I still have this much left so I'm not sure I'll use it all up. Um, before the end of the year but it's been nice I'm liking seeing what formats work well for me um, at the end here I've got monthly wrap-up pages so I've got my audiobook stats and my physical book stats so I've got January February March April May June July and this one will be August and then I also have um, a couple of pages dedicated to video ideas. So just jotting, jotting things down when I think about them. So that is my bullet journal flip through. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It's fun for me to see the different setups, setups that everybody does. I'm not um, super detailed with my bullet journal. I just kind of like to have somewhere to mark my uh, books and YouTube stuff. That way it's all in one spot. So, um, yeah, it's what I'm enjoying so far. So now I'm going to get to reading while the rest of my videos upload. Today is August 2nd, which means it's day two of the Magical Readathon. And I am currently on page two, 52 of Every Heart a Doorway. Um, there's a hundred and sixty some odd pages in this book, so I'll probably get another 30 to 50 read tonight, and then I should be able to finish it tomorrow night, which will be Friday. And I'm still listening to The Grey House, so I'm on, um, I'm four and a half hours in, so I've got, like, eh, my phone's loading so it's not telling me, but I think it's something around like 32 hours left. I didn't do a whole lot of listening, actually I didn't do any listening to this audiobook while I was at work today. Um, so I'm trying to catch up right now, but I'm also working on packing for my trip. So if you want to hang out with me, feel free to. Um, gotta plug this in again. Basically, I'm just working on laying out my clothes for Austin, figuring out what I still need to bring, um, and that's about it. So, I've got this little green and white dress from Forever 21 that I'll wear one of the days. Um, these are my workout clothes. I'm planning on running while I'm there, but we'll see if that actually happens. I've got a bathing suit. I've got pajamas. Um, 
I can wear shorts in the office, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of that because it's really hot in Austin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know yet what I want to, if I want to pair my blue shirt with my green shorts or my blue shirt with my blue shorts. Probably the green shorts. That looks pretty good. Um, and then I've got this pink one here that are just kind of like gauzy, loose material sorts of things. And I've got tank tops that I'm going to wear these with that way. Um, once I step outside of the office, I can just take off my shirts, <laughs> wear a tank top, and be good to go. Um, so that would take care of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I think Thursday I'm going to wear a black dress and Friday I have a blue dress. Or those are the other two pieces I'm bringing. And then I've got an extra pair of shorts. Um, these are from Old Navy and they're linen so they kind of stretch a little bit. And then I've also got this, uh, it's backwards, this kind of black and white tropical print shirt from Old Navy that's really lightweight. And then just a lightweight jacket in case I need it. Nothing too special with my wardrobe here, but I think that should be good. Um, I kind of like to match my underwear to what I'm wearing. So I'm going to lay that stuff out. Um, so let's talk about looks while I do that because you don't really need to see that. Um, every heart of doorway I'm liking so far. I think it's really interesting to see the author's perspective on um, different portal worlds. So if you don't know, um, the Wayward Children series is about kids who go through portals like um, the wardrobe to get through Narnia, um, Alice fell through a hole to get to Wonderland, um, Dorothy and the hurricane to get to Oz, those sorts of things. So our main character is named Nancy and she recently got back from a portal world that she absolutely fell for. Um, like most of the kids at the, uh, I don't remember what it's called, it's a boarding school. So I'll just call it for now the Wayward Children's House. Um, really want to get back to the portals, portal worlds that they were in. So they're struggling a lot to um, kind of adjust back to real world life and what that's like. Um, so that's what Nancy's going through right now. Um, sometimes, so like in Narnia, if you've read it, um, the kids were gone in Narnian years. They were gone like from the time they were kids to grown ups. But when they came back to the real world, it was like seconds had passed. So time is different in each portal world. Um, and that's very apparent in this story. So Nancy was, um, hopefully this moves smoothly. Not really. There we go. So Nancy was in her portal world for, uh, gosh, like 10 years or something like that. And so I think she was gone from this world for like six months. So her parents thought that she was kidnapped, um, sends her to this boarding school to uh, basically heal, get back to her normal life. Um, but all she wants is to go back. So it's interesting to see how that's working for her. Um, so there's different kinds of portal worlds and in the, at the boarding school or the, oops, sorry. 
So there's different kinds of portal worlds. So um they're kind of the kids are kind of split up when they get to the Wayward Children's house into whether the world they went to was a nonsense world or a logical world. So right now I think Nancy's is classified as a nonsense world and her roommate is Sumi. I'm having a really hard time with I'm really like bothered by her. Um, she's all right, but she's just kind of obnoxious. She's from a world that kind of reminds me of like Candyland mixed with um, the game in Wreck-It Ralph where he goes and there's that King Candy evil guy and the kids and they drive around and stuff. So it kind of reminds me of that, um, which is fine. Uh, it's kind of interesting how that's set up and how that kind of works. But um, her roommate is from that world and she's kind of a little annoying. Um, she's just super hyper and stuff like that. So it's kind of, it's not hard to follow, but um, when she starts talking about like the portals and how they work, it kind of gets a little confusing. Um, we haven't really learned, there's my highlighter. We haven't really learned yet a lot about um, how the portal worlds work, and I don't know if we're going to, but so far it's um, it's interesting. It's definitely an easy read. Um, there's a character in the books, I think his name is Cade, who I really like. Um, so yeah, I am enjoying it so far. Um, I've heard that there's representation in this book, and there is. Uh, the main character is asexual, um, and I think, I think, but I'm not sure that Cade might be transgender. Um, so as I find out more, I'll keep you posted. So that's basically where I am with um, Every Heart a Doorway. So then the gray house. Oh, it's kind of interesting. I'm reading two books that deal with um, homes, I guess, for young children. Um, I guess our main character, Nancy, in uh, Every Heart or Doorway is a, a young kid. She's 17. And I don't exactly know what age group the kids are in um, the gray house, but it's basically like an orphanage for kids. All right. Um, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here. So, um, the gray house, I don't think I mentioned this before, is, um, I got it on Kindle a couple months ago when they were having a sale, I guess you could say. It was like, I think seven books for free and it was books from all different countries. Um, so The Grey House is a Russian story. It was written in Russian and translated. I'm going to close the blind here to see if that helps the lighting a little better. Eh, that's a little bit better. Um, so yeah, this is a Russian novel. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm getting a little confused in some places. Uh, our main character, I don't know his real name, but in this home you get kind of nicknames if, like, depending on how long you've been there, um, if people like you or not. So he smokes cigarettes, so they call him Smoker. And um, there's different, I think they're all in one house, but there's different, like, divisions, I guess, of the house. So you've got the pigeons, the hounds, uh, the snakes, the bats. I think those are the names of them. So he was in the pigeons um, faction. It's not a faction, though. I don't really know what to call it. And he just got transferred. And it seems like he's happier where he's at. Um, he gets bullied and picked on quite a bit. Um, he is in a wheelchair 
and by the sounds of it, I don't think he has any function in his legs at all. Um, so it's basically like an orphanage for crippled kids. So there's a lot of people in wheelchairs. Um, there's a kid that is blind. Um, and that's all the characters I've been introduced to so far. So they all have their like levels of leadership and um, who's in charge, what the pecking order is essentially. Um, so right now Smoker is kind of at the bottom but the kids are pretty intrigued by him. And so it's just kind of an explanation of what goes on and I guess the kids he meets. I don't really know what the plot of this story is yet so I need to listen to it a bit more to find that out. So I'm going to do that while I continue packing and maybe before bed it's 6 30 right now and I'll be in bed in like an hour. Um, so maybe before bed I'll do a quick check-in and let you know if I've gotten any further with this story but that is it for my check-in for right now. Hey guys, so we are on day three of the Magical Readathon. Um, last night I read another 30 to 40 pages in Every Hearted Doorway, so I'm on page, I think, pretty close to 90 right now. And I did listen to a little more of The Grey House, but I think I'm only probably another 45 minutes in. Um, my plan was to listen to The Grey House while I was at work all day. But instead, a coworker mentioned um, the Potterless podcast on Spotify. And so I went down a deep, dark hole of that. And so that's what I decided to listen to throughout my workday instead. Um, so right now, I am home. I just vacuumed the house. I got a pair of shoes for Austin that I want to show you because they're ridiculous and I'm really happy about them. Um, and then just give you an update. I am going to make um, a kimono or two or three depending on how many I can get through. I have fabric for three of them. I wanted to make three but I don't know if I need to take all three to Austin. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm probably going to continue to listen to Potterless, at least until the guys get home. Um, they do curse in it, so I don't really want to play it with Maddie in the house. Um, just to show off my shirt really fast, it's a Harry Potter-inspired shirt that my friend got me for my birthday. It just says love. Um, I can ask her what shop she bought it off of on Etsy. And link it below so you can pick it up if you're interested and now for my shoes um, I just as a like a disclaimer um, I always thought Tom's were so ugly and then when I saw that Skechers had Bob's which is basically like a knockoff of Tom's I was like Ugh, this is terrible I'm never gonna buy those well I was looking for black flats for my trip and um, noticed that uh, Fred Meyer or Kroger had uh, bobs. <laughs> and then I noticed that they had some with dogs on them. And then I was reading and I was like, oh, bobs for dogs. Like they, you know, help partner with uh, Save Them All, which is a rescue that tries to get all dogs. Like there's dogs and cats. I think there's ones with horses. So basically helping shelter animals. So I got some that had, um, I think it's a pit bull or it's a staffy. To me, it kind of looks like my dog, <laughs> but I decided to get those. So I just want to show you what they are really fast. Um, they're a nude or a natural color, and this is the dog on them. And I'm really excited about them. So... Um, I'm just going to wear them around the house and break them in a little bit before I have to go. But I wanted you to see these. They're ridiculous and I love them. So yeah, that's my update for right now. We are on day four of the Magical Readathon. And so far I haven't finished any books. Um, I didn't get a chance to read 
uh, Every Hearted Doorway last night by Sean and McGuire. So I am going to try to finish that tonight. Um, we watched Ready Player One instead and ended up staying until like 10 o'clock at night. We even let the kiddo stay up really late. Um, he really enjoyed the movie. He actually asked this morning if he could watch part of it again. Um, I was a little let down by it just because the book was my favorite book when I read it last year or the year before. And they changed a lot, I think, probably to make it more relevant to pop culture nowadays versus pop culture in the 80s. Um, so I was slightly disappointed, but it was an alright movie. I'd probably watch it again if I could just let myself forget um, what actually happened in the book and not compare it so much. Um, so today I have just been um, working on kimonos for my trip that I have to take tomorrow. Um, I'm working on two. I actually just finished one and I should have this next one done probably within the next two hours. And during that, I've just been listening to, um, I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between YouTube and my book. So I'm still listening to The Grey House and I just made it to chapter 14. Um, I'm listening to it on a 1.4 speed right now. So it looks like I've got... I'm almost nine hours in now and I've got 28 hours left. So I'm going to continue listening to that. Um, the story is getting interesting, more interesting at least. Um, we're starting to see different parts of the Grey House, like the um, hospital where some of the kids go either to get like fit for prosthetics or um, if they have something going on with their brain. Um, we're starting to see just more like character dynamics and how the kids interact with each other. And then a couple more backstories on, um, how the relationships were formed and how the kids got there. So it's interesting and I'm going to keep listening to it and work on this last kimono that I will need for next week. finished my first book. It is Every Hearted Doorway by Sean and Mike Wire. So this was my acceptable levels in Herbology, which was to read a book with a green cover. That definitely covers it. Um, it's only 9.30, but I am extremely exhausted. It's like two hours past my bedtime, so you guys will have to excuse me. Um, in the morning, I'll give you my actual... Uh, rating for it. I think it's either a three or a four star rating, um, but I can't exactly remember where my cutoff for three and four stars is percentage wise. It's late for me. So um, yeah, it was a really good book. Um, I liked that it was a quick read. 
Um, there wasn't like massive amounts and pages upon pages of description, but I still feel like you got the whole idea of what Sean McGuire was trying to get across. Um, and it just wrapped up really quickly without feeling like anything was left. Um, I do want to learn a little bit more though about like the directions and how each of these different worlds falls in on like their compass so to speak um, because you've got high logic worlds or you have logical worlds or nonsense worlds and they can either be high logic or high nonsense and then there's a mix of like um, wicked and virtue and then there's a couple other like directional features on it um, so it's interesting to see what each world kind of falls into <sighs> excuse me I told you it was late um, so I hope we do get a little more description on that as the series progress um, I might end up switching out one of my books so that I can read the next one. I know there's a category with, oh, there is, um, for Transfiguration, the acceptable level is a book with a gray cover, and Down Among the Sticks and Bones is pretty gray. Um, the inside cover is, and I think it's black, but the outside cover is, um, mostly, like, gray, black, and white. Um, I'm supposed to read Nevermore for that, but I can always, uh, I mean, Nevermore is an audiobook, and I think it's only a couple hours, so I can probably fit that into another challenge here, or just wait to read it, um, until next month. Excuse me. So, I might start, um... Black Hole by Charles Burns. This is the Exceeds Expectation Levels for Herbology. It's a book with pictures in it. It is a graphic novel. Um, it should be pretty quick. I think I am going to start it tonight just to see how far I can get. Um, and then I'm still debating what book I want to take with me on my trip to Austin um, because I don't... Actually, I've only got one... Um, ebook that I'm list or reading and I'm currently listening to it on audiobook um and it's my longest book so I would like to get another physical book read while I'm listening to this audiobook and not just only have the one um because I don't think there's any audiobooks I can start right now um no not without finishing that so, I think I might take um, uh, Anna Marie McLemore book, so start my charms with um, The Weight of Feathers, but I'm not entirely sure yet because it's a hardback book and I don't know if I want to travel with it. So, I've got quite a bit of time tomorrow to decide what I want to do and I will let you know before I board the plane. So, that's it for right now and I will check in with you uh, tomorrow. day six of the readathon. Um, I just got to my hotel about 15 minutes ago. No, probably 20 minutes ago now. Um, it's almost 1 a.m. on the 6th 
And I'm just doing a quick face mask um, for probably a good 10 minutes and then I'm gonna go to sleep, try and just get away some of the airplane gunk. So a quick update because technically I didn't vlog yesterday which was the 5th. Um, so let's backtrack to I guess Saturday night the 4th. I did start reading the um, Black Hole by Charles Burns after I finished Every Heart a Doorway by Seanan McGuire and I'm probably about 30 pages into the graphic novel. There are no page numbers so I'm not exactly sure just how far I am. So um, I didn't read anything yesterday morning Sunday um, because I was finishing up editing a video to make sure it would be live for today and then just spending time with Skylar and Maddie and my family before we had to leave for the airport. Um, so I did listen to, well I read probably two chapters in The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. That's my um, uh, acceptable level for charms. And then I listened to quite a bit more of um, The Grey House. So I don't exactly know just how far I am in that, um, but I probably, I think I'm over, I want to say over 13 hours in it now, which is a pretty good chunk of time. So I'm just gonna um, let this sit for a little longer, set an alarm clock, decide what time I want to be up. I know we're gonna get on a shuttle at 8.30 so that we can be at the office around like 8.40 it's right down the road um yeah and then tomorrow evening we don't have anything really big planned so i will um probably be able to get some more reading in and while i work i like to listen to an audiobook so i might have some more of the gray house done and be able to update you on that so that is it for right now oh in this face mask if you're wondering is a sheet mask from Pacifica. It's the like rose and peptid one. Um, it's supposed to be hydrating and I do have really dry skin so um, I figure after being on a plane where it kind of dehydrates your skin this would be really good. So hopefully it makes me feel good and ready to go in the morning because I have to be up in like six hours <laughs> and I'm a minimum of eight hours of sleep a night kind of person. I love my sleep. Um, yeah, so that's about it for right now. So I will probably chat with you tomorrow. Hello. So today is day seven of the Magical Readathon, and I haven't read anything the past two days. Um, I have been listening to the Potterless podcast at work a little bit, and um, well, I've been eating and stuff at the uh, hotel, which I will take you on a tour of tomorrow when the sun is out. Um, so yeah, I've just been pretty busy. I would normally listen to my audiobook at work, but um, I've been chatting with my coworkers who I am meeting this week for the first time. So I'm trying really hard to not put on my headphones and like put my nose to the grind and actually like pipe in on conversations and stuff, um, which has been really nice, and I'm perfectly fine with not reading for that reason. And then I just haven't been reading my physical book, which I started the, and I don't remember if I've said this, but I started The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. Um, on the plane I read like two chapters and then decided that I was probably going to fall asleep, so I put in my headphones and listen to The Grey House for quite a bit. I think I might have dozed off a little bit during it. Um, so I don't think I've given you an update on where I am with that book. And honestly, I don't know where I am off the top of my head. Um, I'll try to have an actual update tomorrow, reading-wise. But yeah, today, uh, yesterday I hung out with a coworker after work. I got to meet her miniature dachshund named Pender and she was the cutest thing in the world. I got my puppy fix because I am missing my puppy quite a bit. So that was nice and she took me to Trader Joe's to get some 
um, food. She made me nachos or made us nachos as a after after work snack and then um, hung out with her for about an hour, hour and a half and then she took me to Trader Joe's so that I could get like a second dinner sort of thing. And then I kind of just listened to Potterless while I was eating and got ready for bed. Um, it's currently almost nine o'clock. Um, it is 9.09, .09, so it's past my bedtime. Um, so I'm gonna eat some more Scandinavian swimmers. These things, they're really good. Um, and get ready for bed, wash my face and stuff. I just laid out my clothes for work tomorrow. And so I'm going to continue listening to Potterless and yeah see how far i get with that um i'm probably just gonna listen to one more uh episode and then call it a night um tonight for dinner or tonight as an activity we went on actually we um did an escape room one of those puzzle rooms um I don't remember what the name of the place was called so if i find out i will let you know tomorrow um, so essentially we were locked in a room for 50 minutes and had to solve puzzles and figure out combinations for locks to escape the room. Um, we did Sherlock's library at like level four, which was supposed to be the hardest level. And we did escape with like seven and a half minutes left and we solved the bonus, uh, puzzle, I guess you could say. So I will insert a picture up there to show you guys what uh, our, our cool little get up for our group photo. Um, that was a lot of fun and then we went to this restaurant called Cyclone Anoy and we went to a restaurant called Cyclone Anaya's which is kind of like a Mexican restaurant. Um, I had a giant salad like as big as my face I think that bowl was and we were there for probably three or four hours just hanging out and chatting and stuff. Um, on the walk from the parking garage to the restaurant, uh, we were in the domain in Austin and we walked down this road and like got to the corner and I saw the side of the Erin Condren building and I just like lost it. Um, I think I, I'm pretty sure my jaw dropped and I was like, <gasps> that's the Erin Condren building, like before we even turned the corner and saw the um, building name. And so I was debating on whether I wanted to force everyone to go in and my coworker was like, if you don't go in, you're gonna regret it. You're gonna think about it for the next couple of days. So we went in and walked around and it was really cool to see. Um, so that was fun, even though I know I'm not gonna get an Erin Condren planner for next year, I am gonna move into a traveler's notebook. Um, it was still fun to walk around. So yeah, that's about it for this update. Um, hopefully I'll actually have something reading related tomorrow to share with you. I'll try my hardest to um, listen to some audiobook or something. But that is it for right now. So I will chat with you all soon. We are on day eight of the Newt's Readathon and as promised, I finally have some natural sunlight to do a hotel room tour for you. So let me show you where I'm staying this week. So when you walk in the door, you get a nice kitchen view. Um, it's got a fridge that I have like bare minimum things and got some fruit and veggies and some cottage cheese. Um, I even have a fridge and dishwasher. It comes fully stocked with pots and pans and utensils and things and then you've got the two bar stools and a coffee pot if you're that kind of person and then there's this interesting little ledge thing that if I wanted to put my purse there I suppose I could so then you walk into the kind of living room bedroom area and there's this nice big desk so if I wanted to work um, any longer during the day I could but I don't want to. And then we've got a nice little picture there and a couch. There's my suitcase. That's been the home of my suitcase since I got here. Um, and then that really cool side table. I really like that actually. 
So then we've got the bed. Um, it's made up as much as I wanted to make it up. I haven't been getting room service every day so that my pillows can stay how I've wanted them. And then I've got windows here that are kind of dirty, so please ignore that. Um, so I think that's downtown that way. I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of construction going on right now. And then we are right across the street from Top Golf. So I think I might actually go across the street this afternoon. It's already 6 p.m. And I don't know, like buy a bucket of golf balls and go hit them or I might go to the pool or I might actually walk around the domain but it's a little warm today so then we've got this closet that I tried to make the handles turn for so long they don't turn they just pull so you've got ironing board iron there and then some hangers if you need them. And then if we turn around behind us. Hi, there's a mirror. Um, and then this is the bathroom. Counter's a little messy just because I've been getting ready here. Um, here I am again, hi. I really like that these uh, mirrors have lights on the side. And then this is just a giant glass big shower so it's really nice so this is my room for the week or I guess my home for the week and I've been enjoying it haven't really gotten a lot of time of just hanging out in it because we have been busy bees hanging out with co-workers and doing fun things and stuff but it's really nice to uh, lay my head down and those sorts of things all right reading update. I did listen to more of um, The Grey House today at work. I am, I think I finally made it over the 20 hour mark. Um, I might be at 19. I don't think I'm quite halfway, but I'm so close to being halfway. And I am starting to finally understand a bit more um, what's going on. So I thought we were going to follow one main character the whole way through, but as we like meet characters from our first character's point of view, we start to branch off into stories from the other characters' points of views and just kind of learn what's going on and those sorts of things. Um, so the big thing that has happened recently is that um, it's all disabled kids, so kids in, um, in wheelchairs, kids that have prosthetics, that use uh, canes and walkers, um, don't have their vision, those sorts of things that are in this house. So within the house, there are different tribes. Um, basically, like the kids are split up into separate rooms, and then each room has a leader of their tribe and they all have different names like Sparrow and I think there's the Hounds and um, I don't remember what all of them are. I think there's like rats and stuff like that. And then they all have different nicknames for each other. So you're following these kids as they kind of move around the tribes, as the tribes meld together and they have their issues. Um, and those sorts of things and the most recent thing that happened is that the tribe leaders decided on a new rule and the new rule is that the boys and girls could mix so you know you're experiencing that kind of like first love um, teenage angst sort of thing now within the story so it's kind of cute and then you've got your boys who still think that the girls have cooties and they blush when they see them and they don't want to be around them and those sorts of things. So it is taking an interesting turn. Um, I don't remember if I said this in one of my first vlogs or clips but I don't, I didn't really know what to expect for this story and I did think it was going to follow one character and for some reason I thought he was like escaping. Um, 
but I guess not. Um, I know I did reread the synopsis and they are facing pressures from the outside. Um, so like the surrounding neighborhood and houses and those sorts of things. They don't really like the school. Um, it's an eyesore in the neighborhood and those sorts of things. So um, as the book progresses, we're gonna start to feel more pressures and um, they definitely do draw a lot of strength from the house. They feel like the house is a living, breathing being um, that takes care of them. And um, we're gonna start to see that more magical realism element play into this a lot more. So that's my reading update for right now. I haven't read any more of The Weight of Feathers. I'm gonna change into some of my active wear and tennis shoes and go hang out at Top Golf. It's 6.15 p.m. right now, Central Time. And then when I get home, I might make some popcorn and um, read a little bit, but we shall see. I'll probably listen to either some Potterless or some more of the Grey House while I am over at Top Golf. So hopefully I will have an update for you when I get back. Top Golf was a complete bust. Um, it's a 45 minute wait just to rent a bucket of balls and hit them. So I'm down at the pool now and I think I might go for a swim even though people keep telling me that the water temperature is like the same as the air temperature. Hopefully it'll cool me down but we shall see. Just a quick reading update before I go to bed. I am 50 pages into The Way to Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. It's going pretty fast. I really enjoy that her books have pretty short chapters, so it's easy to um, say just one more chapter and keep going when you know that it'll be over soon. So um, I am enjoying the story so far. It's kind of like I would I guess describe like a modern day uh, Romeo and Juliet type of story. You've got two feuding families, the Corbos and the Palomas. Um, the, they both do um, kind of circus acts, but I don't really want to call it a circus act. Uh, the Paloma daughters, they all um, have birthmarks that are kind of like a pearlescent scaly sort of thing and all the daughters swim and their act is that they are mermaids and then the corbos um i think they have feathers that grow in their hair and i don't know if they have anything else that's kind of a distinguishing feature that makes them a corbo, um, but they perform kind of tightrope type acts. So they go up into the trees with these elaborate um, wing uh, contraptions, and they uh, walk on tightropes and do things like that. We haven't gotten a lot of insight yet into what exactly the act is that the corbos do just kind of what their costumes look like. Um, so right now they're in this town um, called Alamendro, I think is what it's called. And this is one of the towns where they all, where the Palomas and Corbos um, paths kind of meet every year. There was something big that happened quite a few years ago and both families lost family members um, and they each blame each other so we don't know yet exactly um, there was a flood that happened we don't know how it was caused um, which family is at fault and the like so right now we've really just been introduced to our two main characters uh, the book is split up so one chapter will be from Lace's point of view and the other chapter will be from Cluck's point of view um, I know there's romance involved, so at some point they're going to come together. Excuse me. Um, and kind of fight their family history and uh, what's been going on. So, um, right now we've really just met 
close to and a couple siblings and cousins. Um, the Paloma grandmother, Abuela, she is very harsh to the daughters and stuff. Um, she prides the boys a lot because they beat up the Corvo boys. Um, but we haven't really gotten a lot of insight into the adults or really many other um, family members of the Corbo side other than Cluck. So it's interesting so far. <laughs> it's interesting so far and I am excited to see where the story goes and how it evolves and stuff. Um, so far Cluck and Lice have had one meeting. Um, they both think that uh, each person is a local. They don't realize that one is a Paloma and one is a Corbo. So it'll be interesting to see their reactions when they do find out and uh, what else happens with this. And I kind of am excited to hear a little bit more about the Corbo's performance and acts and what they do. Um, I do love mermaids and I love the water. So if I had to be one of the families, that would probably be my preference. Uh, I'm scared of heights, so I could not do any like type rope activities, but I hope we get a little more insight into what both families do. <sighs> Excuse me, it is time for me to go to bed. Um, so yeah, but what, what both families do and just get more insight into how they started with their acts and where the feud started and just kind of piece that all together so i will hopefully have more red tomorrow i know it's going to be a busy day we have happy hour after work um so i might be able to read some before i go to sleep tomorrow but i'm not entirely sure so i will keep you posted as i get more red and for now i am going to shut off the light and go to sleep so i will chat with you later all right, so today is day 11 of the readathon. Um, I read quite a bit yesterday, but didn't have a chance to film it just because my flight got in so late. Um, there was an incident at the airport where an AMP mechanic employee for Horizon Air actually ended up hijacking um, a Q400 Bombardier. Um, and unfortunately the plane did crash down and the gentleman lost his life. So we got home really late, which means I wasn't able to update you. Um, so reading wise where I'm standing now, I am 17 hours into the gray house. I have 19, almost 20 hours left. Um, I haven't, I really didn't get to listen to a lot of that while I was in Austin because normally I would listen to it while I'm working. So I really need to finish that soon so I can start some of my other audiobooks. Um, tomorrow the TBR throwdown readathon begins. So I do need to get that finished so that I can listen to the audiobooks I have planned for that. I started The Weight of Feathers on my flight down to Austin, read it throughout the week, and last night I got to page 192. Um, there's 308 pages. Uh, we're kind of at a turning point in the story, so it'll be interesting to see what new information we get and how things are resolved. Um, I am liking it though. It's really cute. I like the magical realism in it. Um, and I do, like the, and I do like the main characters we're following. So I will hopefully have this done. I'll probably read some more tonight and then maybe finish it up tomorrow. That way I can be fresh for the readathon starting on Monday and focus on those books that I have planned for the week. And then I read another section in Black Hole. I can't tell you what page I'm on because these aren't numbered, but this is going pretty quickly if I can sit down and read it for a chunk. It is a graphic novel, um, so it's a pretty quick read. 
again just if I have time to sit down. So right now um, we are getting ready for dinner. Skylar's making us burgers. I'm going to practice my violin and then we're going to watch a movie. So I'll be reading later tonight once we get into bed. So that is it for my reading update right now, and I will check in with you all here in a little bit. Day 12 of the Magical Readathon, and I am sitting in front of my bookshelf because I am reorganizing it today. Um, update, I read quite a few more pages, well about 50 more pages last night in The Weight of Feathers, so I have like 41 pages left, and so I'll be able to finish that today. We are starting to get more information on the backstories between the families, so hopefully I will know what happened to cause all the um, tension and whatnot. I haven't read any more in The Black Hole, um, but it's a graphic novel so it'll be pretty quick. I might try to finish that today because the uh, TBR throwdown starts tomorrow. so. I kind of want to have a fresh slate of what books I'm reading just for that week. Um, while I reorganize my bookshelf, I am going to listen to The Grey House and try and get some more time finished in that. And then I think for next week I might uh, put it up on the shelf or not listen to it so that I can focus on my books and then I'll pick it back up. if. I have more time um, for the second half of the readathon. So that's my plan for today. Uh, I'm going to work on taking all these books off my shelves and kind of reorganizing them. Right now they're kind of organized by genre, but not really. And I've got a red section and a to be read section that's just not working for me. So I do want to organize everything by genre. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, I will actually have a, uh, a video posted of me doing this whole shelf reorganization thing. So if I remember, I will have it linked below in the description box, but it will be uploaded after this first half. So, or maybe before, I don't know yet. I haven't planned out my whole month in videos. So that's my plan for right now, and I will check in with you all in a little bit. So I wanted to give you all a quick check-in. Um, this is my bookshelf, completely empty. I don't know, like, if you haven't watched my previous bookshelf tour, um, these are four cubes together, so each of them have nine cubes. So we've got um, one stacked on top of the other. <clears throat> um because I'm not going to show this in my shelf organization tour, I'm going to show you all my books on the ground. <laughs> um, these, This first row here is collections, and then all of my classics. In that corner I've got contemporaries. The little bit in front there are um, kind of mysteries. If you can tell, it's not my favorite genre. And then I've got fiction there. On this end here is children's, that pile by the chest is historical fiction, and then sci-fi. Um, these books all need to fit on the shelf, so that's what I'm going to do right now. And then these are all of my fantasy books and dystopian right there. So. Right now I am going to work on getting the ladder shelf filled. Alright, so today is day 13 of the Newt's Readathon, but I'm going to stop this for what I finished up reading on day 12 so that I can do a full vlog for the TBR Throwdown. So my vlogs this month, or at least the Newt's vlogs, are going to be split into three parts. Um, Day 1 through 12 is going to be this vlog, then we're going to have day 13 through 19, which will be part 2, and also the TBR throwdown vlog. And then days 21 or 20 through 31 are going to be part 3 of the vlog. 
So last night was the 12th and I finished reading The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. Um, last night I only had about 40 something more pages left and we did get to learn um, all the secrets and what was behind the family's feud. I really enjoyed this book a lot. I liked both of the main characters. I also thought the plot was interesting. I do really enjoy Anna Marie McLemore's um, just stories that she tells. I love the magical realism elements in them. This one, it wasn't huge, but I mean, it was still perfect for the story. Um, I think it really added to the plot and it was it just made for a really good story to tell um so i did really enjoy this i gave it a four out of five star rating which i think i gave wild beauty either four stars or five stars so now i can say for without a doubt that she is one of my favorite authors because i've read two of her three published books she'll have a fourth published book um October 8th, I believe, is when it comes out. So I was definitely not disappointed by this book at all. I did really enjoy it. Um, and I'm ready and excited to read uh, When the Moon Was Ours. I think that's her second book that was published. Um, I plan to read it for my Exceeds Expectations and Charms. Um, I don't remember what the category was that it fit maybe it was a cover that charmed you. I think that was it. So I am looking forward to getting into it, but just so I don't blend the stories together, I am going to take a little bit of a break between reading this story and that story and focus on a couple other books and try and get those out of the way and get um, some more of my acceptable level books done before I move into Exceeds Expectations because Right now, I am pretty limited on what I can read for this readathon. So uh, that brings my wrap up for this fir first part um, to a total of two books finished. I read uh, Every Heart a Doorway by Sean McGuire, and then I've read um, The Weight of Feathers by Anna Marie McLemore. I'm probably a third of the way now into Black Hole. I did read I think two sections of that last night when I finished The Weight of Feathers and then I'm about halfway done with The Grey House. So I feel like my progress has been pretty good. Um, I know I've got a lot of pages and whatnot under my belt and hours listened to. It just doesn't feel like I've gotten very far because The Grey House is such a long book and it's taken me a long time to actually get through it. And then um, I probably could have finished Black Hole last week while I was in Austin, but I decided not to take it with me because the thing is quite a bit of a chunker. So that's it for this first part, and we can get into part two here pretty soon. It should be up um, about a week after this one goes up. So I hope you enjoyed this first part and would love to know for the first two weeks what your favorite book has been so far. I think for me it's definitely The Weight of Feathers, though I did really enjoy Every Heart of Doorway as well. I'd say I'm doing pretty well on the books I've been reading and my enjoyment level. So let me know what your favorite has been so far if you are participating in the Magical Readathon or if you just have a set TBR that you're going through for August and aren't participating but stumbled across this video please let me know that as well. And I will chat with you down in the comments until the next one. Bye.